Hi, I'm Alex McColgan, and you're watching Astrum. And today I'm starting something a bit different. Hubble has released a zip file on their website containing the top 100 pictures Hubble has ever taken. What I will do over the course of 10 episodes is go through these pictures one by one and explain what it is you're looking at. And believe me, some of these pictures require an explanation. Number one. This spectacular collection of stars is the NGC 1850 double star cluster found in the large Maglianic cloud, a satellite galaxy to our own Milky Way. NGC 1850 consists of a main globular cluster in the center and a younger, smaller cluster seen below and to the right. The main cluster is about 50 million years old, the smaller cluster is only 4 million years old. It's composed of extremely hot blue OB stars and fainter red T Tauri stars. T Tauri stars are younger stars that are still forming, so young in fact, that they may not have even started converting hydrogen to helium, which is how our sun produces its energy. Instead, they radiate energy released by their own gravitational contraction. You see, when a star cools, the cooling causes the pressure to drop and the star shrinks as a result. This compression, in turn, heats up the core of the star. OB stars, on the other hand, are some of the brightest and most massive stars out there. In this image, you can also see the remnants of stars that have gone supernova, leaving behind this super bubble of diffuse gas known as N103, which looks similar to the well-known supernova remnant Cygnus Loop in our own Milky Way. It is believed that the birth of new stars can be triggered by the enormous forces in the shock fronts where the supernova blast waves hit and compress the gas, hence why you find these very young stars in these clusters. Number 2. The Red Spider Nebula, also known as NGC 6537. It's a planetary nebula found near the heart of the Milky Way. What produces nebula? is often, when a red star is dying, the outer layers of the star shoot off into space by strong stellar winds. Once the atmosphere has dissipated, the hot and bright core of the star emits UV radiation which ionizes the ejected outer layers. The absorbed UV radiation energizes the gas of the planetary nebula, which produces all sorts of different colors. This two-lobed, symmetric planetary nebula definitely looks like a spider and houses one of the hottest white dwarfs ever observed, probably as part of a binary star system. The star itself is not visible in the image because it's so hot, most of the light it radiates is in the ultraviolet. Internal winds emanating from the central stars have been measured in excess of 1000 kilometers per second. These winds expand the nebula, flow along the nebula's walls and cause waves of hot gas and dust to collide. Number 3. This planetary nebula, NGC 2080, or the Ghost Head Nebula, is another member of the Large Maglianic Cloud satellite galaxy. It's called the Ghost Head Nebula because of the two distinct white patches it possesses, which look like ghost size. The western patch, called A1, has a bubble in the center which was created by the young, massive star it contains. The eastern patch, called A2, has several young stars in a newly formed cluster, but they are still obscured by their originating dust cloud. Because the dust clouds are still around the two sets of stars, astronomers believe these stars are not more than 10,000 years old. The nebula is 50 light years across, and if you look to the left of the picture, you will see a lot of green. This is due to ionized oxygen atoms, whereas with the rest of the nebula, you find ionized hydrogen atoms producing this reddish color. Number 4. The Tadpole Galaxy Now I've already covered that galaxy in my top 10 most beautiful galaxies video, so if you want to find out more about this remarkable galaxy, I'll leave a link in the description, so check it out. Number 5. NGC 4676, or the Mice Galaxies Nicknamed so because of the long tail of stars and gas emanating from each of the spiral galaxies. They're both very irregularly shaped as they're in the middle of colliding with each other. Although it is thought that they will eventually form one single spiral galaxy. 
they are a massive 290 million light years away. Interestingly, in the zip file of the top 100 Hubble images, the image of the mice galaxies appears to have another galaxy just above it. After some research and with the help of Reddit, it seems this galaxy is there by accident. I couldn't find anything else on it, so it seems someone in the Hubble team was just a little trigger happy with the clone tool, as this galaxy is not in any other picture I found of it. Number 6. This is the Cone Nebula, part of the bigger NGC 2264, or the Christmas Tree Cluster. If we rotate the image, you can see why. It definitely has a Christmas tree shape, plus the star clusters could be seen as baubles or Christmas lights. This star at the trunk of the Christmas tree is a massive O-type star. Looking at the infrared makes the Cone Nebula stand out very clearly. The nebula is about 2,700 light years away from us, and this section of the nebula is about 7 light years long. The structure and colour of the nebula comes from ionised hydrogen, the UV radiation coming from the cluster's young stars. Number 7. This is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, another picture we have already looked at in another video. Since then though, I have found a very cool animation giving us a 3D view of what the Ultra Deep Field would look like. Each one of these dots is a galaxy, each one containing millions upon billions of stars. In fact, astronomers have counted around 6,000 galaxies in this one image alone. And what is even more interesting to me is that we are actually looking at different times right now. The closer galaxies we see come towards us first in the animation are maybe only millions of light years away from us, whereas at the back of this image are galaxies which are billions of light years away. They may not even exist now. It's just that all the light from these galaxies hit the telescope's lens at the same time, but in actual fact, the further back the galaxy, the further back in time we are looking. Number 8, and we're visiting the large Magellanic Cloud again. This star-forming nebula is part of a region within this galaxy called N11, and is one of the most active star formation regions in the nearby universe. Zooming out a bit, you can see why. There are so many densely packed star clusters, full of young stars made up of the dust and gas of this giant nebula. Zoom out again, and we can see where the original picture fits in. It's hard to think that we can resolve the individual stars in another galaxy, but I'm glad we can, because the end result is breathtaking. The colours of the different pictures are because they were taken with different telescopes, which pick up different light wavelengths, for example, infrared or ultraviolet. Number 9. V838 Monocerotis This is a red variable star 20,000 light years away from us. In February of 2002, it underwent a huge eruption, increasing in brightness massively, before dimming again as is expected with these kind of eruptions. But then, in early March, it increased in brightness again before dimming once more, and again in April it increased in brightness before dimming again to its previous level before the eruption. It is unlike anything that has ever been witnessed before. At its peak, it was one of the brightest and biggest stars in the Milky Way galaxy, at over 1 million times more luminous than our Sun. We don't know what caused the eruption, but theories abound, ranging from nova outbursts, to two stars colliding, or even the star swallowing one of its giant planets. The structure you see around the star is its light echo. Because light to us seems very instantaneous, it's quite hard for us to, to wrap our heads around a light echo, but it is very much like a sound echo, and uh, the best way I can show you is through this. This marble represents Earth, and the ripple represents the pulse of light which shot out from this star. Unobstructed, the ripple would look like this. But because there was a lot of dust around this star, when the light shot out in all directions, it bounced off the dust and created a second ripple which then reached the Earth. Now this is still in the process of happening, which is why this structure looks like it's expanding. 
Interestingly, when the star first increased in apparent magnitude, it was so bright that it was shining in blue, as you can see from the outside of the light echo. Number 10, M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. This was also featured in the Galaxies video, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to know more about that too. Well, we made it through the first part of our series, and I don't know about you, but I learned a lot just making this video. We still have a lot of fascinating things to see and explain, so why not subscribe so you won't miss out on this series in the future? I also do a lot of other space videos about our planets and solar system, so if you're interested, have a look by here. And finally, want to have a sneak peek of what's to come? I'll leave a link in the description for the 4.7GB zip file. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.